Kalimera, Kalispera, Jin Dobre. Welcome to Talking God's Grace. This is Frank. Today's topic is so important because there are so many people who are uh, left a little bit unsure about their salvation. Yes, they believe. Most people say they believe in, in that uh, they're okay. However, yes, I believe, but. Yes, I believe, but what if? Dot, dot, dot. You can put in the blanks how you've been taught your salvation looks. It's always around a possibility and a probability, right? And for former Jehovah's Witnesses, it's still the same. Even though they've left their religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, which they disagree with in some aspects, not in all, but in some, um, yet they continually carrying this theology of works-based, conditional-based salvation. Now get this, this is across the board of all religions and most of Christianity. So God's grace somehow is not really being taught or understood properly. Can we know? Is there a way of knowing the truth? Uh, can we believe and know and trust God at his word that you are totally saved when you believe in Jesus Christ? that your sins are totally forgiven and that what else <laughs> that you have eternal life and that you are a new creation the day you believe not sometime in the future progressively sure there are changes that we are making as a person yes there is and i've set up a new website uh, it's called talking god's grace I like this channel so it's on www talkinggodsgrace.com and today's discussion I've uploaded onto that website and I'm slowly building this up with articles and many and different features and one feature I've uh, included in there is about the ministry now it's a something that I'm working on and I want to expand on this uh, on the website, this ministry that will help some of you guys uh, that want a ministry, but maybe need some direction and help in putting stuff together. So I'm hoping that this will help you as well. Now, when you go onto my website, if you want to find this talk, I'm going to read it to you word for word virtually, except for a few things. I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about myself. Um, but if you want to find it on the website, it's on the subheading. Well, it, there's there's the site. So it's www. I've just written on the on a whiteboard there. It's on that subheading there. Talking God's Grace Ministry Guide. So if you get to the subheading, you'll find this current talk. Amongst other things, as I said to you, it's slowly. It's a working process. Oh, progress. Sorry, I've just loaded it up. It's been on my heart for a few years to do this website, and maybe I'll talk more about it in another episode. But for now, let's get to this topic. The topic's really about knowing versus doubting. The, the certainty of our salvation as a former Jehovah's Witness and Jehovah's Witnesses alike and believers, Christians, where, wherever you are. How can we be certain? And so I've started this uh, article by this, just uh, as by way of uh, introduction. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today I want to talk to you about a topic that is of utmost importance for every believer, the assurance of salvation. It is a subject that often brings about questions and doubts in our hearts, and we may wonder, how can I know for sure that I am saved? What if, I, what if I'm not truly saved? Today we will explore the differences between doubting and knowing and discover how we can have a firm and unshakable confidence in our salvation. Point number one, the struggle of doubt. Many of us have expressed seasons of doubt and uncertainty regarding our salvation. We may question the authenticity of our faith or wonder if we have done enough to earn God's favor. These doubts can be distressing, leading us into a cycle of fear and anxiety. 
But let me assure you, my dear friends, that faith is not meant to be blind, and God desires for us to know with certainty that we belong to Him. Now, unfortunately, I'm just going to add lib to this. Unfortunately, we can a lot of this doubt also can stem from the teachings that we are uh, that we believe, right? So, this is part of the struggle. Sub point number two: the assurance of knowing. Scripture is encouraging us to examine and test our faith in 2 Corinthians 13.5. However, a lot of this, this text is get, gets uh, taken out of context. Uh, does not mean that we search for our sins or rely on our works to determine our salvation, as some would like to use this text. Instead, it means that we have a genuine knowledge, a firm conviction that Christ is in us. Because that's what it goes on to say. So how do we do? How do we know this? Okay, so obviously the only way we can know this is to turn to God's word, right? So my next points are knowing salvation with certainty, knowing and not doubting your salvation. So as you can see, as you when you go onto the website, you'll see it like this, um, and you can use this in your own ministry. So it's all for free. So okay, how do we know salvation and certainty? And not doubting the importance of knowing. So the exhortation to examine ourselves in Second Corinthians thirteen five is not about searching for sin. I said that, didn't we? While belief is essential, knowing knowing is different from merely believing. Many Christians have faith, but they lack the assurance of their salvation. See, without knowing, we may fall prey to the lies of religion that burden us with works by salvation, exhausting us and leading us away from the grace of God. So now here's a transitional thought. How can we move from doubting to knowing? Well, let's let's look into the scriptures now. The assurance of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's work in our lives is a key aspect of knowing of salvation. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. The Spirit enables us to confess Jesus as Lord and believing in Him, affirming in His indwelling presence within us. So that's a little test for you. Can you say that Jesus is Lord, your Lord? Through the Holy Spirit, we become temples of God, and this truth gives us a firm foundation for our assurance. Now, on my website, I've done an article called The Holy of Holies that you are. Have a look at that because it links to this idea. Okay, so now let's. That's the uh, three points A, B, and C. So now confessing Jesus as Lord. That's the first point. The Apostle Paul tells us in First Corinthians twelve three, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. When we sincerely confess Jesus as Lord, it is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. This confession is not a mere right recitation of words. It is a declaration of a heartfelt belief in Jesus' Lordship over our lives. Through the Spirit's prompting, we can confidently affirm that Jesus is our Lord and Saviour. Two, or point B, the testimony of the Spirit of the Scripture. Faith knows. Throughout the Bible, we, we find assurance of our salvation. For example, writes in 1 John 5.13, Write these things to you who believe... In the name of the Son of God. Now notice this next point that John says. So one, I write these things to you who believe. Right? To you who believe in the name of the Son of God. He's talking about the believers. So that you may know. Now he's talking about a knowing. So that you may know what? That you have eternal life. This is his past. He's not saying something in the future. He's saying if you believe in the Son of God as a believer... Know this, you have eternal life. So God wants us to know, and he's built this out through John, through uh, Jesus, uh, let John know, that God wants us to know that we have eternal life, and he has given us his word as a testimony to this truth. As we study and meditate on scripture, the Holy Spirit will confirm us the reality of our salvation. Now I'm going to, I've got two illustrations you can have a look at 
to just help, you know, an illustration's there to, to, to teach us something. So there's two illustrations you can have a look at. One's about our foundation and the other is about um, knowing the difference between doubting and knowing. I won't read through those illustrations. Please go on my website and look at it and read through it and uh, you might be encouraged by those illustrations. So, so then how does faith know? Now I'm going to skip that point and go straight to point number three. How does faith that knows? Do you have a faith that knows? Okay. In the Bible, there is no such thing as a blind faith. Biblical, biblical faith is believing and knowing. Here's some scriptures to point this out. Peter said in John chapter 6, verse 69, We have come to believe, we have come to believe, right? So believe and know, believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. John 6, 69. 1 John 5, 13. We just read this, but just to go over it. John wrote that, that you may believe in the Son of God and know that you have eternal life. Now notice what Paul says in 1 Timothy 4.3. Paul spoke of those who believe and know the truth. So what do we learn from these texts? Faith is not blind. It is both believing and knowing. That's Hebrews 11.1 1 is a text that you can read. And the example from the scriptures emphasized those three scriptures, and there's many more, emphasize the importance of both believing and knowing, not doubting at all. We're not, this is not about doubting, this is about knowing. And that's if you believe one, then you should know the other. That's what it's that's what they're saying, right? Our knowledge of salvation is not based on our own experiences alone. But the truth of God's word and the Holy Scriptures revelation to us personally. So here's a transitional thought. Now that we understand the biblical basis of knowing, let us consider and embrace this assurance in our lives. You don't have to doubt your salvation. It is secured. Once you understand that the Spirit is indwelling you, that is sealed, you know this is the truth, right? then you can believe, you believe in the Son of God, then as John and others have said, know that you have eternal life. Know that you're safe. You know, know that you are okay. Seeking the Holy Spirit's help, so embracing the assurance. This is my next point. Seek the Holy Spirit's help in knowing your salvation. James 1.5 uh, The Spirit is of wisdom and understanding, eager to reveal the truth to you. I'll put there, He is the Spirit. You can interpret it your own way. Meditate on the scriptures that declare God's promises of salvation in eternal life. Romans 10, 9, John 3, 16. Let the, let the truth saturate your heart and mind, which is really important. Remind yourself of God's faithfulness and evidence of his work in your life. You can have a look at Psalm 103, 2, 5. Uh, reflect on these points it's about god and his word not about your word all right that that's really really important so in conclusion i put dear brothers and sisters in christ our faith is not blind it is rooted in the reality of jesus christ we can have assurance and confidence in our salvation because the work of the holy spirit within us now doubt may creep into our hearts but we have the power to overcome it overcome it with the truth of God's word and the witness of the spirit let us hold fast to the truth that we we can know that we can know the unwavering certainty that we are saved may our lives be a testimony of God's grace and love as we walk in the confidence of our salvation friends as I said to you there is definite proof in the scriptures that you are totally saved it is a it is a knowing and there should be no doubts there should be no doubts at all a lot of the doubts come from a, uh, a false theology or theology of error that has been handed down to us from tradition generation after generation and unfortunately it's very difficult to break through through we get comfortable with these ideas 
But God's grace, God is good, and His grace is so much wider and more more expanse. And we just need to take time out and to see this, this truth, because it's powerful. It is very powerful. As I said to you, I've uploaded this talk onto my website, talkinggodsgrace.com. It's under the subheading, Talking God's Grace Ministry Guide. You'll find other subjects there on Islam, Judaism, which I might just talk about in my up-and-coming talks. Uh, so we can get some feeling about what what do, what is Judaism, what do they think about Jesus, etc., and Islam as well, their view of Jesus. Uh, just to give us a better idea when we're talking to other people, if that is the case. And there are other articles on this site. Uh, as I said to you, it's a work in process. But more importantly, this talk, I hope it's been a comfort to you in in knowing your salvation and not doubting. This is really critical. Believing and knowing is a scriptural theme. Believing and knowing. And sometimes they're the two of the hardest, they're the things that are, I guess believing and knowing has been hit so hard by error, by uh, conditional thinking, conditional salvation, putting God in a conditional box, that we don't see the full spectrum of His love. You know, His love is totally unconditional. So with that in mind, I hope you have a great day. Let me know what you think of the website uh, as you go on to it. And tell me if whatever you think that needs to be done to improve it or um, anything else, uh, maybe change the themes on it. You know, as I said to you, I might change. It's a long theme, Talking God's Grace, Ministry Guide. I might just put Ministry Guide. My theme is Talking God's Grace, but anyway, as I said to you, I'm just working on it. And uh, there is something coming in the future also which will help you in your ministry because I really want to, for us, uh, if you're believing in God's grace, to share it. Not just to hold on to it. And yeah, it's good to benefit, but we can share it with our friends and neighbors, right? You don't have to go out knocking on their doors, but if the opportunity arises, you can share God's grace and be confident about it. That's my hope anyway. Talk to you guys again. See you later.